skills and uh, the plans. Uh, and we was discussing about the uh, result of the experimental part, CU, LEAD, and uh, ZN. As we can see about the CU, uh, here we have uh, which uh, plant has most uh, transportation factor. And as we will see, uh, parsley about the CU has the most uh, uh, transport uh, factor and radish which has the um, minimum uh, transportation uh, factor. So it shows that when if the soil is um, polluted with CU it's better not uh, better to use radish uh, or other things uh, or if it is uh, and it is not good to use parsley because uh, it, uh, it all things is transported to the uh, leaves and it's not good. But it is a little bit tricky because radish uh, is. Uh, do you know? Do you know what is radish? Yes, radish. We will eat the uh, uh, root. So in reverse, it's not good. Uh, but tomato would be a good option because it had the uh, minimum uh, transportation transportation factor and. Um, also, we will eat the aerial part, not the uh, roots. But about the lead, again, lettuce and parsley is dangerous, and the tomato here is the best again. So tomato, more or less, is one of the uh, best ones. So we go, we go to the value of the tomato, but it's already 20%. 20, 20 it's not very low, but 20% here. Here is perfect about the lead. 0.07, percent so it's very good, and here only 15 percent. So in um, about the lead, there is a less uh, danger. About the rui, again latex, so it, uh, we can understand that the latex is one of the things. So uh, uh, it's good also for for uh, for also when you are uh, looking as a consumer, so you can understand which kind of. Uh, um, uh, plants are more sensitive uh, and, and mo have more transportation factor and if they are irrigated with bad water so there is less uh, I mean uh, this information even for a consumer is also good you can choose uh, and eat in, in your daily uh, uh, um, foods the one who has less danger if there is a for example now we understand tomato is one of the good uh, uh, um, uh, things that we can use it and Letek is not very good because he has the most uh, transportation factor. Now we, we, we are here we um, organize this data based on the fruits and uh, plants to see which plants is more sensitive to which uh, uh, element. You, we will see here based on uh, the value that we, ha we are have in this farm it is in this farm, it's not, we cannot globalize it, it's for this farm. Letek is, uh, uh, lead is the worst, and the CU is the best. About the tomato, again lead, radish, again lead, and parsley is lead. So we can understand that lead, or PB, is one of the uh, dangerous material, uh, between these three at least because uh, we, uh, uh, we have cadmium and other things that we should consider. This is about the experimental result. Here we have the result of the first field study, and it is uh, the result of the chrome. The, in the first field study, as I talked to you, it was about barley and wheat, and uh, uh, we uh, measured the concentration in the soil, again, root, stem, and grain of the uh, material. As, uh, as you can see, uh, here the result of normal water, and here is the wastewater. If, you, if we compare, always when we use the wastewater, the pollutant is much more than normal water. Again, here also. Uh, always, uh, when we use um, wastewater, the pollution is much more. Again, I emphasize that it is interesting because when we consider it that the pollutant in the uh, even in the uh, water of the uh, wastewater was not so much uh, high, and it was uh, based on a standard was good. Uh, so it shows that uh, um, maybe this standard was not 
uh, high enough for the uh, for the materials but uh, we cannot decide very fast it needs more research because maybe the soil from pre uh, maybe uh, the soil becomes alluded, uh, polluted before that i mean that some years ago the water treatment plant doesn't work well now uh, the the soil becomes polluted and now they have changed their strategy so their water is better but the soil is polluted before so uh, now this is the uh, pollution from the soil which goes uh, uh, to the soil another one we get only sample one time maybe on that time that we get the sample the pollution was not so high in the water maybe if we go in another season if we go to another time of the day maybe it was the, day, the time that the industrial who make pollution doesn't work so to decide very uh, it is uh, not easy to decide but this is a point that show us we can do research more on this topic uh, 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 but it, uh, but we can consider, consider it more or less serious because we have the same result also for the uh, experimental part. In the experimental part, the soil was the same uh, and we used the same water for uh, all of them. So it, it shows that this, this is a point. Uh, uh, I mean, this is a gap that uh, we can do research more, more on it. Is it really if the water is in the standard value but near high not very very low can be dangerous for the plants or for the soil or not this is the subject that we can talk more about it here also we measure the TF the interesting point here is that when TF value is high you see the soil is less polluted because they bring it out it is uh, good for the people who work on the uh, reclamation soil reclamation in the same area when they used uh, uh, materials who has a uh, plants who has a more um, a tf then the soil is more clean because they bring out more uh, um, pollutant but the, on the, and because roots always are uh, stay on the soil and they come back again to the soil. Here we have the standard values. As you can see, uh, uh, roots, stem, and grain. The value is much more the standard value, but the soil. You see again, this is interesting. The soil, even the soil, is not polluted more than the standard, but with this value also we have this so the um, uh, a lot of things uh, i i just only emphasize this is as a, uh, this is like a question because uh, you know this is only one research and uh, these these are only some samples that they they are get so we cannot decide very fast but it only shows that this is an open um, place for more uh, more I need to do more research on about it to reach to an idea which can generalize it. Usually we, with one experiment we can maybe it was wrong something, maybe uh, the method was wrong, maybe it, the method was not uh, serious. So we need to repeat to another place with another method, with another experiments to be sure that it is true. But it is sufficient to make a question for us that we can continue to get some ideas. Because one of them was one of my main ideas uh, from this course is not only to talk um, uh, learn the basics because i'm sure all of you uh, phd student msc student and you have good professors and good books you can read it easily it's good to have some uh, new ideas and challenges that we have in our research and it was it, it become a good place for um, uh, exchange the data and um, for more collaboration in the future We have the same table for uh, cadmium. Again, a similar um, results from that one, but the values are smaller. Uh, we have uh, so, uh, the cadmium has less pollution here, as you can see. But again, we have more polluted than the uh, standard uh, values. But about the cadmium, the 
soil is more polluted than the standard value here 1.5 uh, even the standard value is very strict 1.5 because cadmium is more dangerous so again uh, but uh, but here the soil is more uh, the pollution of the soil is more than a standard again uh, here the tf uh, when the tf is higher the soil is more or less cleaner we cannot but uh, um, but uh, we should consider that here tf is not very uh, different um, but we cannot uh, exactly say that this is less than this because you know in uh, statistic um, is different with mathematics in mathematics you, you will say 3.2 is bigger than 3.1 every for everyone is clear but when it comes to the statistic it is not like this we should because we should consider this one also and then we should say if it is this difference statistically uh, significant or not and we need uh, to do some uh, experiment about it. Uh, here is uh, the same results from these uh, previous two tables but we arrange it in a way to get uh, some information I mean this is not a new data this is the previous data but we put it in barley wheat and the standard uh, to can compare the CD and Chrome together this uh, to see how is the difference as you can see here uh, cadmium has more pollution uh, less pollution than the Chrome uh, um, and the TF for the cadmium in uh, wheat and uh, is not so much difference uh, and, for, and Chrome I mean when there is a, a mm, wheat the, the, there is not so much difference between the uh, cadmium and chrome in uh, transportation factor but about the barley it's long difference you see 0 0.35 0 0.30 uh, about the uh, chrome what it shows us is that trans uh, transportation factor is related to both and to element and also the um, plants it's the uh, combination of uh, both of them um, we can we cannot say that if only cadmium is um, the transportation factor is high or low it depends on also on the plant which plant uh, is it so it's uh, uh, it's it shows that it is hard we, should, we need a big table to have the plant and of course soil will affect it what is the soil condition what is the pH of the soil and a lot of uh, uh, factors if you go to the internet and search you will find a lot of research that they um, investigate the, uh, different different factors uh, which affect this transportation uh, but maybe this topic is mostly uh, related to the soil science people the people who works on soil science or maybe the people who are working on uh, um, plants, uh, plants I don't know the name in English uh, for for example for uh, um, especially about agriculture and their plants uh, it's the topic of this uh, research area not the water engineers uh, we as a water engineers we cannot go so much in details about these things because our uh, major is a little bit different but we can work on it any interested this is the uh, result of the second field uh, study as you remember the field this study was on tomato eggplant uh, pepper and corn no I didn't talk about it uh, but now I am telling uh, it this uh, in this field study we consider tomato eggplant pepper and corn mm, but the elements were the same Cu Pb and Zn <clears throat> the numbers in the black is the result of the concentration and the numbers in uh, red is the TF transportation uh, factor as you can see here tomato have 17.6 percent of CU 32 percent for eggplant 18 percent and 3 percent it is interesting result so if you have a field 
which is con uh, which is polluted with Cu, then it's good that you concentrate on corn because only three percent of the Cu comes to the corn. So uh, it's a good. Uh, you are sure that uh, it it not become com uh, polluted. But for more research, you can uh, concentrate on the pollution which is going to the corn and also to the stems because the stems will be go to the uh, animals so it is also concerned indirectly finally comes to uh, uh, human again because it becomes they produce milk meat and everything so uh, finally we get to human uh, about the uh, lead the concentration is less than 10 and uh, uh, as you can see, all of them have a, a slow uh, movement. About the Rui, uh, uh, about the ZN, we have 80% maximum for pepper and 16% uh, for eggplant. Now, uh, so we see that when the water becomes polluted, uh, how is uh, the effect on the um, soil, plants, and other things, and how is it complicated? I don't, I'm, I don't go to the health effects. Of course, you all of you are very uh, well educated about health effects. Uh, the different chemicals have different problems. Of course, we know that it has problem so it's sufficient uh, you know a lot of these uh, come from the water and uh, from the plants and uh, unfortunately about water quality sometimes with um, the the pollution is not so much that uh, suddenly um, uh, some people not uh, we cannot say unfortunately or fortunately because this is not good again uh, some we will see, see the effect very fast all people become uh, sick and one day then you understand that it is happening something and you do something. Usually it may be takes five years, ten years to see the results. Suddenly you will see that the number of the people who get cancers are increasing. And uh, you don't know what is the real reason. All of these air pollution, water pollution, uh, the lifestyle, uh, all of these can affect and you cannot see the about the quantity of water. You see the results very fast. You can see that dams have less water in behind the reservoirs. The discharge of the river decreasing. You will see it. But the quality we are in the room, but we don't know how much pollution now we are uh, breathing. Uh, we have different uh, pollution now in the air um, uh, in every room, uh, from the furnitures, from the um, uh, chemicals that we use for. Uh, throw away the insect and everything. They are also um, uh, harmful to our body, but we will see the results in a matter of time. And now, uh, the other part, we are going to rules and regulations that we can have to control everything. You know, uh, human beings usually use some standards and rules to make their life easier. You have some rules for driving, then uh, you can have safe driving and less problems. Uh, everything that have rules and uh, standards, which is based based on science and some uh, rational things, will help will help us to have a better life. And uh, again, about the pollutions, we should have some rules and uh, standards. These rules and uh, standards must must have uh, two uh, different uh, met. We have we could have two different methods of regulation. One of the regulations is EQO, Environmental Quality Objective Standards. These kind of rules are focuses on the water quality. For example, you have a river and you want to use this river for uh, irrigation. These kind of rules are concentrating of the concentration of the pollutant, uh, the um, chemicals, the parameters. If they are good for your uh, uh, objective or, or not, you see, environmental quality objective. You have an objective, you have an uh, idea, you want to use this water for drinking. 
then you have some standards say if this water is good or not so it's concentrated on the uh, um, one aim if this it is good for irrigation or not is it good for animals or not and uh, we have some such a, a standards for uh, these types and the second uh, of the rules are uniform emission standards in this method uh, focus wastewater quality again consider the same uh, river in, in in this time we will focus if i have a factory and i have a wastewater and i want to put this wastewater to the river what is the standard what is the rule uh, and what is the minimum uh, maximum concentration of the pollutant that i can send to the river uh, for example they said that for uh, cadmium the maximum could be uh, 5 ppb or 5 ppm it depends on the uh, uh, so um, you cannot uh, uh, and this rule usually is higher because they consider that this river will dilute the water uh, the small amount of the water comes to this river and this river uh, will absorb some of the some some of the pollutant will be absorbed to the sediment some of them will be di diluted in the water some of them will be degraded by bacterials and what others is this is self purification of the river that we will talk about it uh, later when we are talking about the process that uh, controlling the solute transport into the river uh, or groundwater mm. because of that these kind of standards is a little bit higher because uh, because uh, you don't want to uh, use this water directly so it's it's not necessary to be higher but usually the um, standards is a, a combination of these kind of things. before that they are um, separated but nowadays when you have for example uh, us uh, 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 for us you have clean water act or for eu you have EU Water Framework and di Directive WDFD. These kind of things are a combination of the both uh, methods to have a better uh, co covering all issues of the uh, health system. One of the other points, uh, I sometimes I bring complete uh, sentences because uh, they are important and I want to uh, read it carefully because sometimes maybe you cannot understand completely what I say so but when it is written I'm sure that you will get the point so in some water uh, regulation uh, uh, methods they use a chemical water quality criteria uh, it means that for example uh, they said this kind of chemical maximum should be like this max minimum should be like this and they uh, they have uh, they consider the chemical water quality criteria but this is not uh, uh, re reliable uh, because it needs some supplemented by biological criteria we should be sure that this concentration sh mm, check like the method that we have done we had a standard the water was in the standard but when we check the plants it affected but it is a little bit more if it really hurts animals or human beings or bacteria or not for example we will see that if the concentration of a certain chemicals in the river goes higher than a certain limit some kind of fish will die uh, we usually consider the sensitive animals then we are sure that when this sensitive animals is healthy then the others uh, of course uh, would uh, uh, would be healthy uh, these are uh, biological uh, criteria nowadays in new methods they also add these when they want to define the criteria for uh, water standards they you, the, the people who make these standards they will consider these uh, uh, kind of um, criteria also biological criteria like wfd and also clean water act if you want to have more information about these things uh, you can uh, uh, see the website of the EPA I will uh, give you the um, links uh, 
and then is clean water act it's a complete rule regulations about the uh, water quality which is from the USA and also for uh, frame directive uh, water frame uh, directive from um, EU and I am sure that uh, India uh, as we talked with you I think yes yes we talked and uh, oh no no we talked with you yes yes we ha uh, uh, every country have this you have your uh, special standards also usually these two standards is the base for uh, other countries also uh, I'm for example in our country in Iran we don't do research ourselves to bring out the standards uh, usually the committee who because uh, this is something that always the uh, ministry uh, of health or uh, depends on the countries maybe different the government should have their standards to and uh, this this is two different way one we ourselves do research and reach to point which standards are good and some countries follow the other countries who are sure that working better for our, our country we have some committees and then uh, they bring out um, for example they want to write uh, a standard for drinking water they collect the standards from famous countries like uh, this clean water act and uh, uh, also for EU and other countries and then they have the facts from the country also because um, and they put all these facts together and they reach to uh, a standards and then they publish these standards and every con every um, company every uh, governmental um, institute should obey these rules and of course these countries also these, uh, consider the facts inside for example if mm, mm, uh, if the po pollution of some some tenses are usually is high in the country they maybe they decide a little bit higher values than lower values but when they are sure that more than 90 percent of the water have no problem they bring it down with this they will save the quality of water they don't let the other make it more polluted and they uh, uh, control it in the lower values sampling and measurement uh, we are trying to uh, to do i hope that we can do it uh, as uh, Dr. Prasad told, uh, tomorrow we will try uh, to get the samples today and bring it to the uh, to do some sampling for uh, for measurement for us, and then you will have a uh, better feeling of uh, uh, environmental measurements. But now I also uh, explain a little bit about measurement and these things. But it's good if, if we can manage it and we can uh, we can see it in the laboratory. Uh, to uh, after we get our uh, reach to our standards consider we have a perfect standard and this standard is uh, good and if obey, we obey this standard there is no uh, problem for us this is like when we have law of driving and we have a good driving uh, um, law but you will see in some countries there are lots of accidents and a lot of people uh, were killed and in some countries there is less accident but they have this both they have good rules we, we should find uh, some methods to control and have good uh, regulation this is very important that we control that everything follow that rules we have a good standard but if we don't obey that is the standard the water becomes polluted it is not important do you have this rule or not uh, for <coughs> uh, in water quality for for this we have uh, monitoring uh, uh, um, uh, as a tool for this we have uh, um, some stations we should have uh, stations uh, and usually the water authorities do this they plan uh, they have a map they have a map of uh, um, for example Pantanagar and they uh, mm, know where is the water resources where is the wells where is the rivers where is the lakes and they make some points as a station for measurement for monitoring and they regularly they should get the uh, samples when they are more rich 
then they get more samples and they have a better uh, quality of data and they can uh, see it better. It is important that it has a good spatial uh, uh, distribution and also temporal distribution. As I talk, uh, talked in the previous slide, we get the samples only one day, one hour. So how do you know one hour later what is the pollution? Maybe on that time the factory doesn't work. Maybe on that day three of factories are, don't work. And, and maybe they are not in the high production of the pollution. Maybe they didn't put the wastewater yet inside the water. To, to be sure, it's important to have a temporal uh, mm, uh, distribution. I mean, every one day, every month, every season. Uh, but this is depend on the uh, mm, how much money that company have. This is one uh, point. Even you, if you have a money, maybe it's not a good idea every one minute you get the samples. We should find a, an efficient way. We should uh, every uh, um, uh, and su uh, it must be sufficient uh, and it must not be complete. I mean, uh, we don't need uh, every second. We don't need every minute. Uh, but it's not good to have only one time in a year. We, we need a value between uh, these that shows us what happening. This is the point that I told you. Uh, groundwater modeling can help us, uh, uh, sorry, water mm, solute transport modeling can help us. And also about the distribution. Only one sample from one point of the river uh, don't show us uh, a lot of value. Only show one point and we cannot understand where is the pollution coming inside the river. So it's important to have some um, stations uh, in different points of the river to get a better um, uh, idea of it. And if we have, for example, um, about the groundwater, we should get from different points. And for this point also, it is important to know how the water movement in the groundwater, then we can manage it in a better way. We find the critical points and we get the samples from that point. If our sampling planning be creative and be uh, wise, then it helps us to better uh, regulate the system and we always can control all the things that are happening in the future. So this part is very important. It needs, uh, um, usually uh, water authorities have uh, some project for this. I mean, before you, they start the monitoring, they have project to find where is the best place for uh, getting water samples. And which kind of uh, um, uh, temporal uh, um, resolution is better. For example, in Germany, I see that uh, they, when they want to install such things, they will install uh, at first a small, uh, a very a small um, uh, monitoring network. Some of these networks get the data every second. They put uh, some samplers, which is uh, working uh, um, uh, automatically, and get the samples every minutes or every seconds. And some of them are reading daily. And then, after a while, they look at this data and they understand uh, which kind of resolution will because they have the daily, they, when they have the daily, so they have the monthly also. And then they can uh, see, colorate uh, these uh, to each other and make it complete and then uh, they decide better which resolution is sufficient for uh, monitoring the uh, wells. It's, it's uh, something... Uh, I, I mean, it, it is something that you need to be professional in it also. It's not, uh, you need to know statistic and these things to do it. After you find the places and you're planning when you can get the samples, it's the, uh, you should become yourself prepared for sampling before you go to there. So you should need, uh, know which kind of devices you need for sampling. There are different uh, 
from the very simple that you can get a bottle uh, with a hand or some automatic samplers for example when you want to get from the groundwater you need automatic samplers to send them there are some of them that they can get sample from different depths also for you you will send it to the uh, well and then they get samples from uh, different depths there are, um, it is um, uh, business you, you can go to the websites and you see different uh, uh, metal, um, devices and also there are some sensors in the uh, um, uh, companies they produce and you don't need to get samples you put the uh, sensor inside the water inside into the well and it's automatically measure concentration of uh, what mm, the, the things that you need and then it's said but of course not all chemical parameters but some of the chem for, uh, chemical parameters they measure and then they directly send uh, of course they're very ex more expensive if you get the sample and bring especially for countries like Iran like India that human resources are cheaper then uh, uh, for us it's not very uh, valuable it's better to get samples and bring it and measure it but for um, countries that human resource is very expensive it, and hire a person to send it to the field get a sample and come back and uh, you know how many person should work to, to do it then maybe it's expensive mm, but uh, anyway the device al also are not very cheap because when they are automatic because they also need uh, it's not uh, it remember this because in our country in Iran they did uh, this wrong it's good to say um, one of uh, the colleague there told me that when you go to Germany buy something for um, for us find something for us that uh, it be uh, when you, we, we put it inside the groundwater and we measure the water table because the previous one that we have is are not very precise then I understand that there is some uh, minding with them that they buy this device and put it and it works like uh, forever they don't uh, but the measurement device usually need calibration after a certain six months one one year it depends uh, three months you should check them you should calibrate them because uh, electronic device especially in the measurement of the water quality uh, it they easily uh, mm, will lose their uh, precision and they cannot measure very precise they need to um, recalibrate mm, and them so uh, remember always when you have a mm, device for measuring and you want to put it there forever uh, uh, it's not a mm, true way you must uh, you should know as and ask the company how uh, how is the uh, maintenance of this device because, because they will give you complete information from how many times you should uh, check it in the year, recalibrate it, clean it, and everything. The maintenance is very important. So this is also expensive. This is not because the maintenance need more uh, educated people. When you are going to get a sampling, you can send a technician to send the things and bring, or even a non-educated person. You only teach him how to get the sample, and he can do it. But for maintenance of a sensitive device you need a person who is well educated about the sensors and work with it he, know, he must know how this sensor is working and then you will go there to get the samples it depends on what uh, samples you want to uh, um, these samples uh, is for which reason is if do you want to get the sample for measuring the bacteria do you want to get this sample to measure the heavy metal do you want this sample for measure the oxygen uh, uh, the oxygen or you get this sample for other things uh, the um, of course it, it will affect for example to get the sample for oxygen uh, oxygen or for bacterial uh, um, effects then the temperature is very important and the time also because when you get the samples and you bring it to the uh, um, laboratory this time two or three days to grow to um, use the oxygen and it will affect it so it is important that they be in a low temperature and, uh, and to minimize the uh, 
reaction of the bacteria and uh, when you get the sample it's important uh, if you uh, to it becomes completely filled then the oxygen uh, uh, or CO2 cannot com come out of the water sample. So we, you should usually fill it completely and then uh, close the door. There is no, there is no gap and, and the door must be uh, tight uh, enough. And uh, again there is uh, some uh, website uh, from the ESO. Mm, uh, uh, you, you can, it is easy, you can get it and also uh, I mean you can, if you search in the internet you will bring it but I put it again also in the internet. For all of these procedures there is a complete uh, rules how you can do it to be uh, um, and it is the best way I mean, because nobody then complain about your, your method because you, you do it. Uh, for all of these, you have some standards, and uh, I download some of them, and I will give you how to get samples, how to measure, how to whatever you want. They uh, they have for everything. They have some. Maybe if I check my. This is uh, one of the uh, documents that I will give give it to you. It is uh, water sampling and analysis. It uh, completely describe how you should get uh, sampling. What is the sampling frequencies, sampling methods? I, I think it's a very good information for for you. I will give it later. And also this what is all. This is this file that I also will give. It is uh, ISO and water. It's uh, it it have only all, all standards that related to the water. So you can uh, find all the things that you need. It is like a mm, document. You know, for example, he's uh, here uh, talking about the water quality, uh, the, and about the water quality, uh, the ISO is ISO TC 147, and it, it, in this, uh, this is only one name, but it has a lot of subcategories. When you go to this mm, category inside the uh, ISO website, then you have the list of the all mm, uh, standards for different uh, water quality systems. Uh, if I show you, you know, for example, for hydrometry, this is uh, ISO TC 113 is the ISO which related to hydrometry. So all information again, it is it come uh, it's have a lot of a list of uh, standards that you can uh, you you will have a complete information about. Uh, hydrometry, how we can do measure the discharge and these things. Also about agriculture and, and irrigation. We have the ISO TC223 uh, uh, and SC18, section 18. Uh, again here you have a complete range of uh, standards about the irrigation. Also water footprint again I think it's a good uh, resource uh, for having finding fast the standards that you need for doing the works. After you get the, uh, 
sample, you will transport it to the um, uh, laboratory. Maybe you directly analyze it or maybe you storage it for later. Usually in the universities, we will storage it because your, uh, our laboratories usually don't have enough um, uh, um, uh, space to do all the experiments uh, because there are lots of uh, students and they bring different samples and the technicians cannot measure it fast. So uh, they don't have enough uh, uh, technicians and dif enough uh, instrument to do it fast. So maybe you will go in a queue for two months. So it is important to know for uh, your uh, uh, um, chemical parameters that you are going to measure uh, if you have uh, how you should pre uh, reserve your uh, uh, samples to be um, to don't have a, any error um, in it but if you want, for example measure the heavy metals if they are usually stable they don't uh, need any preservation you only need to add some acid to have a low pH then they don't uh, uh, absorb to the wall or to the materials which is inside the water but about biological things then it's a little bit uh, mm, mm, uh, more external. usually we should bring the temperature very low uh, in some in universities they have uh, of course all of the universities have this when they want to measure uh, mm, biological things they have the refrigerators for minus 18, min it is a temperature which is usually a standard, most of the uh, minus 18 is something that the activities are near the zero, uh, so it's a good temperature. And then it's go to the analysis. For, in, uh, for analyzing and measurement, again it depends on the parameters, because there are several parameters which develop to um, show us the water quality because when you s we say water quality it is very uh, uh, wide range what what does it mean uh, you you need some numbers uh, to s understand the water quality if you say uh, 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 from ask a person who is not well educated for him maybe the water quality is only the smell of the water if the water has no smell and it is clean and it's delicious then it's good but you know that it's not like this. It, uh, we should mm, consider a lot of C. Mm, if you have 300 ppm uh, uh, cadmium, again, it has no taste, but <laughs> it's not good uh, to uh, drink. So uh, it's important uh, to know. Uh, uh, so we have different parameters. Yes, taste is one of the parameters for water quality. Even if the water is completely good and there is no problem, if the taste is not good, nobody want to drink it. Or if it smells bad, then nobody want to uh, drink it. Even if to, you promise them that there is no problem, this is only smell, this is nothing else. But So this is one of the quality uh, qualities, uh, parameter. And the taste, the color, all of these are uh, um, physical parameters. But we have chemical parameters, bio biological parameters. All of these par parameters must be tested. And for for, the, for these parameters, there are different kind of methods and different kind of uh, devices to uh, measure uh, the quality. We listed uh, uh, some of these uh, parameters like alkalinity, color of the water, pH, taste, and odor, as I told. Dissolved metal and salt like sodium, chloride, potassium, calcium, manganese, and magnesium. Uh, I, I am sure that you all already know these things. Microorganism, coliform bacteria, Escherichia coli. You, you know it is one of the most important uh, bacteria that make problems, and it's uh, common. And other bacteria, dissolved metal and metalloids like lead. Mercury, arsenic, dissolved organics, and radon, heavy metals. Uh, this is uh, new. This two part when the, the human, uh, the medicine uh, improved, and we nowadays produce a lot of medicines. Uh, therefore, 
there are lots of pollutants re related to the uh, medicines. Uh, nowadays, one of the um, parameters which is low in the, which is high in the drainage water from the cities is antibiotics. The people use antibiotics and these antibiotics goes to the uh, uh, drainage and finally everything goes to the drainage. I, I told you 80% of water that you use in the day comes, uh, go, uh, goes as a drain, uh, wastewater. So these antibiotics goes again uh, and this is one of the things that nowadays uh, a lot of research do on it to how we can treatment the water who uh, has uh, these kind of materials. Hormones, of course. Again, it is related to the medicines. How can we measure? Um, as I told, it, there are lots of methods. Um, if you want to uh, have a good view, there is a book called Standard Methods. Again, in ESO, you can have uh, most, uh, a lot of these, but there is another book which is uh, S, S, um, Standard Methods. And in this book, uh, uh, the measure, uh, all measurements are described. For example, you choose nitrate and you go to the uh, chapter related to the nitrate and it, go, it says all the methods that are available for measurement of, of nitrite. What is the precision, uh, in which range you can trust it, and um, how is the procedure? Describe what kind of uh, uh, devices you need and what kind of methods how you can measure the uh, nitrate in this method. And this, they have several methods for nitrate, for phosphate, for cadmium. And, uh, mm, but here I will tell some of the important and famous one. And I hope that we can tomorrow do at, uh, this photometry or spectrophotometry to measure the nitrate uh, in the laboratory. Then you will have a view uh, how we can measure it. At first, I'm talking about photometry. Uh, do you know what is photometry? How, how many p people know about photometry? You? you? Two person. You also? Three. Uh, you, I to three with you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, in photometry, the base of, of uh, photometry, this is the sample, okay? They send light, the light that we have. They send uh, the light, and here there is a sensor. Measure how much uh, light uh, goes through the sample. Based on the concentration here, you will have a different values on the other side. For example, if you put here the concentration of 10 ppm, then you have another value here. If you can put the concentration 20 ppm, then you have another value here. Uh, to become more, uh, because you know, um, we, you have different materials inside the um, water. Uh, to measure a size and true, what they, what uh, we uh, usually do, if you buy, when you buy the photometry device, then there is a guide inside it. For example, you want to measure cadmium with this uh, method. Then they sell, uh, sell you uh, uh, some tablets. You can put this, you will make two, um, uh, two samples. One, only uh, water, uh, pure water, distilled water. And one sample that you want to measure. There is one tablet you would put in both of them. And, uh, and, uh, and another tablet, only this one. This tablet will make a, uh, a chemical reaction with the material that one, because this tablet is only, for example, for cadmium. Then it uh, makes a, um, a chemical reaction with the cadmium and solve with it, bind with, and make a color. So if you have more cadmium, 
then it's more concentrated. Yes, uh, the color is more, uh, uh, and with this you can uh, uh, understand because it's photometry, and uh, um, uh, photometry is a uh, very sensitive to color. And what you're going to do at first, you must liberate. You uh, make different samples yourself, not the samples you want to measure. For example, this is the sample that I want to measure concentration. I bring it from a river, I want to measure the rate concentration. Before I measure this, I'll make 10 samples. The first one, 1 ppm, 5, 10, 20, 25, 30, different uh, concentration. And I know the concentration that I made. Then I put the divide and red number. Then I can make this curve. Concentration, I know, and intensity. Again, I know. So I can make this curve. Now I have a relation between the concentration and the number that the device will give me. So now I get the sample and put it in the device and get data. I get the data from the curve that I have. I have example I read from the device 1.3. I come here 1.2 and I get here the sample for the concentration for um, 5 ppm. So I understand the concentration is 5 ppm. This is the uh, method of the um, photometry. Uh, everyone get the point? But this method has a weak, uh, weakness. Is it based on Beer's law? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. So more than 3% know this. <laughs> and uh, the weak point of this method is uh, sometimes the materials uh, have, uh, you know, uh, I show you the next slide. And this is the this is the uh, picture of the photometer. This is a photometer? No, this is photometer only. Uh, and this is COVID, yes. That you put the sample inside this and then you put it in the device to measure. Send. It's very simple. It's in the light and measure the, and there is sensor inside that you can measure. It. And this photometer is for, uh, so you can use it in the uh, field. It is movable. The uh, mm, point of the, this method is that um, light have you, you know light have different uh, wavelengths it is a mixture of different uh, waves 